Hello everyone, this is Dr. Glenn Fox, and let's talk about the bony orbit. In this video, we'll discuss the structure and relative location of the bony orbit, focusing on some of the major foramina, fissures, and fossae associated with the orbit, and some of the structures that are either associated or conveyed through those features. So the way that I conceptualize the bony orbit is a pyramid, a four-sided pyramid. The rim of the orbit consists of three bones, or is formed from three bones. Superiorly, there's the frontal bone. Laterally, there's the zygoma, or zygomatic bone. And inferior medially, we have the maxilla. Now, the four sides of the pyramid are going to be conveyed from that rim towards an apex, which is posterior medial. So for instance, we have the roof of the orbit, the lateral wall of the orbit, the inferior or floor of the orbit, and then the medial wall. So here is the medial wall, there is the roof, there is the lateral wall, and there is the floor. It's probably best to uh, to take a moment and appreciate the relative relationships of the orbit to other regions of the skull. So for instance, the, uh, the roof of the orbit is going to be in contact with the anterior cranial fossa, that lateral wall with the middle cranial fossa, the floor with the maxillary sinus, and the medial wall with the nasal cavity and some of the paranasal sinuses, in particular, the ethmoidal air cells and the sphenoidal sinus, as we'll see. The orbit serves as a location to house and protect the eye and the supportive musculature and neurovasculature. So not only will we have the eye, but we'll have the various cranial nerves, two, three, four, V1 and V2, as well as six running through the orbit. We'll also have ophthalmic arteries and veins within the orbit, and we'll have a generous amount of orbital fat or adipose connective tissues, as well as other connective tissues, which help to protect those contents. The bony orbit is an excellent place for those extraocular muscles to attach so that they may tug upon the eye or the superior eyelid. So let's look at the roof of the orbit first. The roof of the orbit consists of two bones. There's the frontal bone and the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. We'll see that the greater wing comes into play with the lateral wall of the orbit. So the frontal bone forms the front of the cranium. And there are a, a few features here that we should discuss. Uh, so medially, there's going to be a trochlear fovea. We can see that best in the cadaveric image there. That trochlear fovea is a point of contact for the trochlea, which is a cartilaginous ring which serves as a pulley for the superior oblique muscle. And we'll discuss this in greater detail when we discuss the extraocular muscles. Laterally on the frontal bone, we have the lacrimal fossa. The lacrimal fossa is where the lacrimal gland, the gland which produces tears, is going to sit. There is also, within the frontal bone, an irregularly shaped paranasal sinus known as the frontal sinus, which is going to be just on the other side of that frontal bone from the orbit. And as uh, previously mentioned, if we go superior to the, uh, the frontal bone of the orbit, we'll be within the anterior cranial fossa. So the sphenoid or the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone is going to play a role in the, uh, 
roof of the orbit. And its major feature that we're to be concerned with is that of the optic canal. The optic canal is going to be a continuity between the, uh, the middle cranial fossa and the orbit. And it's going to convey cranial nerve 2, the optic nerve, as well as the ophthalmic artery, which is the major source of blood for the orbit. Now let's look at the lateral wall of the orbit. So the lateral wall of the orbit is going to look like this. Its two major constituents are going to include the greater wing of the sphenoid bone, which is more posterior medial, and the zygomatic bone, which is more posterior lateral and lateral. This lateral wall is separated from the roof by the superior orbital fissure. That superior orbital fissure, which I'm outlining here, is quite a conduit between the middle cranial fossa and the orbit. And it's going to convey the bulk of the, uh, the nerves to the orbit. So for instance, Cranial nerve 3, which is the oculomotor nerve, which drives most of the extra ocular muscles. Cranial nerve 4, the trochlear nerve, which drives the superior oblique muscle. V1, which is the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, is going to be conveyed through the superior orbital fissure. The abducens, or cranial nerve 6, which innervates the lateral rectus nerve, muscle uh, is conveyed through that fissure, as well as the superior ophthalmic vein, which is one of two major veins, the other being the inferior ophthalmic vein, which drains the orbit and surrounding environments. The floor of the orbit consists of two bones, the maxilla, which is the lion share of the floor, of the orbit, which we can see there, as well as a little bit of the zygomatic bone. There is also a very small minor contribution from the palatine bone as well. The floor of the orbit is separated from the lateral wall by the inferior orbital fissure, which we can see here. That inferior orbital fissure is going to serve as a means to convey branches of the maxillary nerve or the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, which traverse the orbit. And these are going to include the infraorbital nerve and the zygomatic nerve. This inferior orbital fissure is also a continuity between the orbit and the pterygopalatine fossa. That pterygopalatine fossa is where one can find the pterygopalatine ganglion, which is the peripheral parasympathetic ganglion that serves the lacrimal gland. So we can discuss that in more detail when we discuss the lacrimal gland. And that leaves the medial wall, which happens to have probably the, the greatest contribution of a different bone to the orbit. The superior portion is the frontal bone, and that's a small contribution. And then inferiorly, from most anterior to most posterior, we have the maxilla, then we have the lacrimal bone, then we have the ethmoid, and then we have a little bit of the sphenoid bone. The maxilla and the lacrimal bone are going to cradle a region known as the nasolacrimal fossa. Mostly it's the lacrimal bone, but there are parts of the maxilla there. And this nasolacrimal fossa is going to surround on, you know, two to three sides, the lacrimal sac. The lacrimal sac is part of the lacrimal apparatus or system which is the system by which tears, which are secreted by the lacrimal gland, move medially 
across the, uh, the conjunctival sac of the eye and are drained through that sac and ultimately into the inferior nasal meatus of the nasal cavity, which we'll discuss in a subsequent video. That ethmoid bone is also going to be superficial to other portions of the ethmoid bone, which contain various cancellous or air-like sacs of bone called the ethmoidal air cells, which in their totality form the ethmoidal paranasal sinus. So we've discussed the orbit and its various bony surfaces, the roof, the floor, and the lateral and medial walls. This is your summary slide. Thank you for your time.